Rings of Power Season 2, Episode 1, oh boy, is an act of hate driven by spite and resentment. The whole of Season 2, for that matter, is going to be an act of hate driven by spite and resentment. Those without a morality aren't capable of understanding moral inspiration. But it goes deeper than that. They hate moral inspiration. Moral inspiration acts like a mirror. Those without a morality, when they look into that mirror, they don't like what they see. But instead of doing some self-reflection, the whole point of moral inspiration, instead, they lash out, seek to destroy the mirror. Season one was an abject failure. Audiences recognized the agenda for what it was, the intentional attempted desecration and destruction of Tolkien's work. It's payback time. You didn't like what we did to Tolkien in season one? <laughs> Wait till you see what we do to him in season two, chumps. With season two, the masks have come off. What Amazon and the writers of the Rings of Power are now openly saying, legally, we own Tolkien, or at least we're renting it. And that means we can do with Tolkien as we see fit. And what we see fit to do is destroy Tolkien's legacy. And you fans, there's nothing you can do about it. With season two, Amazon and the writers of the Rings of Power are taking Tolkien's legacy out into the town square, wiping their asses with it, dousing it with gasoline, and lighting it on fire. And they're going to attack, criticize, demean, race bait, whatever it takes to shut up anybody who dares to criticize what they're doing. And good luck with that. Years ago, George R.R. R. Martin, in his comments at Trinity College, openly acknowledged the problem that those without morality have with Tolkien's work, and he telegraphed how they were going to try to destroy Tolkien's legacy. The argument has always been that Middle-earth is nothing but a beautiful lie. There is no good and evil, no good guys and bad guys, no heroes, no villains. It all just depends upon your perspective. The angle of attack has always been the orcs. Aragorn isn't noble, isn't just. He wiped out the orcs. He committed genocide. And that's your hero? At the beginning of Season 2, Episode 1, they directly reference this argument. Right after the fall of Malkor, Sauron declares himself the new Dark Lord. He's rallying the orcs, telling them, I will lead you to victory. The orcs are rebellious. They say, no, no, no. We don't want to conquer Middle Earth. We want our freedom. We just want to live our lives as we see fit. Sauron tells the orcs, uh-uh, you will never have your freedom. You think the elves will ever accept you? Men will despise you, hunt you down, eradicate you. I am your only hope. The orcs led by Adar, the so-called father of the orcs, kill Sauron. And then Adar tells the rest of the orcs, you are free, my children. The orcs may not have wanted to have been led by Sauron, but they recognized that Sauron was telling the truth. They would never be accepted by the elves. They would be hunted by men. So out of a sense of self-preservation, they go to war with all of Middle-earth. Don't you understand? The orcs aren't evil. It's the world they live in that made them do what they did. It's somebody else's fault. If only elves and men had lived up to the ideals, that are lies, that they claim to believe. They brung the tragedy on themselves. The orcs are very clearly innocent victims in all of this. Episode 1 also wants to portray Sauron in a sympathetic light. He is also a victim of circumstance. Never mind the fact that Sauron was an agent of Malkor, and that Sauron is seeking to rebuild Malkor's empire, and that Sauron wants to enslave all of Middle-earth, bend it to his will. Details, details. Don't you understand there's no such thing as evil? Yeah, Sauron did some bad stuff, but it's not his fault either. First off, he was murdered by the orcs. Orcs might be innocent victims in all of this, but they're not good guys. Remember, no good guys are bad guys. The orcs kill Sauron because elves and men made them who they are. It's those stinking elves and men who make Sauron do all the evil things he does, from elves and men's perspective. 
Moral ambiguity is back on the menu, boys. Yeah, Sauron did murder an innocent woman, take her clothes. We'll talk about that in a minute. But he's just trying to survive. Sauron wouldn't have murdered the woman if the orcs hadn't murdered him first. The orcs wouldn't have murdered Sauron if elves and men hadn't made them who they are. And if an individual is guilty of the group's crime, the woman brung it on herself. Yeah, Sauron did steal the identity of the king of the Southlands from and then leave to die the one human that was helping him. Yeah, but he wouldn't have been in that position if the orcs had... You get the picture? The guy brung it on himself. After Galadriel figures out that Halbrand is Sauron and lets him go, Sauron goes and turns himself into the orcs, pretending to be the king of the Southlands. The orcs and their human lackeys torture poor little Sauron. Little Sauron suffers so much. The orcs wouldn't have had to do this if they weren't fighting for their very survival. That Aragorn is one evil son of a If only Aragorn hadn't slaughtered all those innocent orcs, Sauron would have never been justified in doing all the evil things he did thousands of years before at the beginning of the Second Age. If you're going to play the moral ambiguity game, you just can't turn evil into some vague, nondescript gray. You have to destroy good. In Tolkien's lore, the elves were flawed, but they weren't corruptible. They were deceived by Sauron into taking the rings, but once they figured out what Sauron was up to, they hid the rings, and they never fell prey to the ring's evil influence. In episode one, every elf, except for Doogie Elrond, who comes into contact with the rings, is seduced by the rings. When the ring, ding, 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 down the stairs to Gladriel, and she picks it up, looks at it for a long moment, and then slowly puts it on her finger, you hear the spooky music of the ring seducing her. The rings don't corrupt the elves, au contraire. They're already rotten. They're portrayed as a bunch of conniving, manipulative, backstabbing liars, a la Game of Thrones. The only difference between elves and men, the pointy little ears. Cured in the shipwright, one of the most noble, uncorruptible elves in all of history. He was entrusted with guarding the only way out of Middle-earth, the only way the elves could get to heaven. And he betrays Dewey Elrond just because he looks at the rings. The elves know the rings were made by Sauron, and yet they still put them on. Power! It's about power! Of course they would grab the power! These are the same people who think Boromir did nothing wrong. His only mistake? Not finishing the job. Not getting the ring. Because power at all costs. One more point I want to talk about in episode one. How did somebody put it? Gender ambiguity. One of my mantras that you will hear me say over and over again on this channel. Every design decision is a conscious choice. It's meant to be that way. With all the characters that are in all of Middle Earth, why did they have to choose Galadriel to tell their story? Intersectional feminism has wanted Galadriel's scalp for a long time. She represents traditional feminine power cranked all the way up to 11. Galadriel has to go. They fired their first shot across the bows, declared their intentions, what they were going to do before season one even started. They were telling the audience, we're not going to give you Galadriel, the ideal of feminine power. We're going to give you Galadriel, who's going to project masculine power. And if you have a problem with that, you're a horrible human being who hates women. Wait a minute. You're taking away a woman's feminine power and then forcing her to project masculine power? And somehow I'm the bad guy? No, I ain't buying what you're selling. That was the audience reaction. We don't know who this is, but one thing we do know for sure, this isn't Galadriel. This is the origin of the writers of the Rings of Power's hate, spite, and resentment. You reject our Galadriel? Okay. And again, they declared their intentions before season two began. You want feminine power? Okay, we're going to give you feminine power. 
It's a subtle thing, but well worth noting, paying attention to. In season one, Galadriel tended to speak in short, sharp sentences with harsher sounding words. Don't have time. I teach. Stab. Twist. Gut. Ah, oh, ah, oh. It's a parody of male speech patterns. In season two, episode one, Galadriel tends to speak with breathy, long, drawn-out phrases with softer-sounding words. And when she's trying to persuade Doogie Elrond to hand over the rings, she puts her hand over his. It's a parody of feminine speech patterns, feminine persuasion techniques. Intersectional feminism's goal is to destroy Galadriel, and they're going to try to use a twisted, manipulated portrayal of traditional feminine power to accomplish that goal. Two birds with one stone. But they got a problem. Intersectional feminism demands that women be portrayed in a positive light at all times, and that women always have to be shown in positions of power and authority over men. So what they're going to try to do is blame all of Galadriel's shortcomings on traditional feminine power. This is the problem with ideology and agenda driving your storytelling. In episode one, Galadriel isn't some superior being who's right or even vindicated. She comes across as a conniving, manipulative dipshit. But she's feminine about it. Episode one hasn't just made Galadriel more feminine. They've made everybody more feminine. What's the modern language? Everybody is wearing feminine-coded clothing. In case you missed the point, when Sauron resumes his human form, he puts on women's clothes. Because it doesn't matter. In this world, all clothing is feminine-coded. I shit you not. They put Sauron, Lord of Darkness, evil incarnate, in a dress. <laughs> The best thing I can say about Rings of Power Season 2, Episode 1, despite their best efforts, they ain't destroying Tolkien's legacy, because whatever this is, it ain't Tolkien. As I said at the beginning of this video, those without a morality aren't capable of understanding moral inspiration. The writers of the Rings of Power aren't capable of understanding Tolkien. The writers are so blinded by their hate, spite, and resentment They've lost the plot. They're no longer critiquing Tolkien. They're too busy fighting with the fans over season one. At any rate, I hope I've given you all something to think about. And until next time, y'all be safe. If you all are still here, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. While you're at it, why don't you like the video, subscribe to the channel, click that notification bell. You can hear me yammer on about something else next time. And feel free to share this video far and wide. Please like and subscribe. Please leave a comment.